moments of bliss in Qigong practice and an update on the Qigong healing course. So I've had some really magical moments in my Qigong practice lately. Now by magical I don't mean literally magic. Um, of course the more we study, the more we practice, the more we understand the principles behind the practices, the more we realize that these are normal, natural things for us to experience. Maybe not normal in that we experience them all the time though. And I find for myself I mean, these sorts of moments can happen any time in my Qigong practice. There can be these, you know, wonderful little moments. But they do tend to happen more when I'm spending time going really deep into some specific practices. Because in the process of going deep and focusing on some, yeah, some practices deeply, of course, it uncovers some new insights and new experiences, and I get these little moments. Now, I used the word bliss in the title for the video. That's an okay word, you could use other words as well. You could use um, appreciation, or joy, or wonder, or even like euphoria sometimes. It's these, these moments of, yeah, maybe deep appreciation could be a good word or a good way of describing it. And it's when I really connect my energy at a deeper level and, and it's often when something shifts in the energy or I get some little new insight or nuance of understanding of, of what's going on with my energy. And I guess for me, connecting to my energy in that way is <clears throat> it's connecting to the real essence of things. So getting beyond the physical, the physical is really important, getting beyond the psychological, the mental as well, to something that's that's deeper, that's right at the core, and it and it gives this yeah deeper understanding, deeper experience. So I've had some of these moments lately, and specifically, they were while I was doing practices related to qigong healing, specifically qigong self healing, which is an important step, an important type of practice to do before moving on to uh, you know applying qigong healing for other people. And that made me think, hey, I should uh, maybe give an update on the Qigong healing course. Now, this kind of connection to your energy is really, I think, in many ways at the essence of Qigong healing. Because in order to do that well, whether on yourself or whether, you know, working on other people as well, you, you really need to have that direct connection, that direct observation of your energy to be able to work with and then know what it is you're working with and, and what it is that you're changing, right? And so a lot of the Qigong healing practices really focus on developing this connection. Now, we do develop this connection through any type of Qigong practice, really. Um, it's just there's much more of a focus on it, a direct focus within the Qigong healing practices because it is so uh, important to uh, being effective at Qigong healing. Now look, having said that, um, there are of course levels to the awareness that we develop. And early on working with Qigong healing, um, if, if you're working in a well-structured way, uh, with good instructions <laughs> essentially, if you follow those, those instructions well, you can still do a lot of good, both for yourself and for other people, while you develop that awareness. And as you develop more and more of that awareness and connected to that more and more skill at directing, working with the energy, well then you become more and more effective. But you can start to be effective relatively early on even without a great deal of awareness. It's a step-by-step it's a -step process. So anyway, what's the update on the Qigong healing course? I know there's quite a few of you who have been waiting for this for quite a while now. Uh, <laughs> basically, I'm working on it. Um, within these courses, uh, if, if you've done any of the other courses, which I expect a few of you um, doing, you know, watching this vlog will have, you'll, you'll know that we cover a lot within each of those courses. And I try really hard, or I, sp I spend a lot of time, before it even gets to the stage of writing or recording videos or anything like that, I spend a lot of time contemplating 
planning how I can put the information together in the best way to give people an understanding in a relatively short space of time. And not just a theoretical understanding, but an experiential understanding, because that I think is really important for all Qigong practices. That's really the essence of it, understanding the theory. I've made vlogs about this before. If you just go with the theory, you, you might be completely off track and you wouldn't even know uh, if it's not, not actually connected to your experience. And so t taking something, and, and again, this applies to all Qigong practices um, to a large extent, taking something that is multidimensional, has so many facets to it, so many interrelated parts, and then figuring out, okay, how, how can I make this linear in terms of the learning process? A linear learning process to guide you through those different parts so you can then see the whole in its multi-dimensional reality and work with it effectively. Um, in my experience, a, a lot of, not all, of course, <laughs> it, I, I've talked about this before as well in the vlog. In my opinion, overall, the standard of Qigong teaching out there in the world, there's more and more good teaching becoming available, which is great, it's a fantastic thing. Um, in the past, and there still continues to be a fair amount of this today, a, a lot of this teaching was in a very sort of scattered, piecemeal way, and you're like, oh, you got this little bit, and oh, then you got this little bit, and oh, maybe several years later you got this little bit, and it takes a while to put the whole picture together right and a much slower process than i think it necessarily needs to be if if you yeah if you work with a really structured way of learning and practice you can get that whole picture much more quickly um and and that then empowers your practice and empowers your understanding and helps you to then go on further to you know even further insights so th this at least for me, maybe there's, there probably are some other geniuses out there who like are able to do this much faster than me. Um, but for me, this takes time uh, to really go through and consider carefully, how am I going to put these pieces together to give people the richest understanding, the richest appreciation, the best start on developing their skill with these practices and with the energy related to them. Um, yeah, that, that takes that takes me some time and a big part of that is yeah it's choosing the order choosing the way to describe things as well and choosing what to teach and what not to teach actually as well that's a big part of it as well again if you've done any of the other courses with long white cloud qigong before you'll you'll know i i tend to err on the side of giving more like i i, I really want to give people a really good rich understanding and with lots of um, yeah lots of the broader understanding of different things um, and uh, you know I, I tend to err on that side but going too far in that direction can actually just be a distraction and it can actually giving too much can actually stand in the way of someone's understanding rather than facilitating it and so it's finding a balance there of giving a lot of depth a lot of richness a, a lot of context um, a, a lot of you know understanding of the exceptions because if you don't understand the exceptions often you don't really understand how something works um, but at the same time not giving too much so that it, it distracts and actually gets in the way of understanding so I'm going through that process at the moment um, as I said <laughs> you know I've been having some magical experiences in my own practice and that's because I've been working on some of these Qigong self-healing practices so you know I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it I'm working on it um, I think I'm making some progress in terms of how I'm going to teach this to again to give people the the best experience they possibly can have um, but yeah it's probably going to take a while longer but look I'm I am really looking forward to sharing these um, when the time comes because they are so valuable both for ourselves uh, you know and our own health and well-being and also, it's such a valuable thing to be able to share with other people, to help them. Um, in my experience, Qigong healing techniques and practices are able to address some things in ways that other modalities and approaches just don't seem to quite be able to do. Um, and it's a big part of that is because of the way it does bring together the mind, the psychology, the body, the physical, and focusing on that essence, the energy, it's, it's able to address some things at a different level that you know, I've found to be effective when other approaches just really haven't worked. 
So it's a really valuable thing to be able to share with other people and help them with. And I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, yeah, giving that training to people so that they're able to make a difference in their own lives and also start to make a difference in the lives of other people around them. So for those of you who are waiting, be patient, please. <laughs> I am working on it. Uh, it. It'll kind of take as long as it takes because I am intent on, yeah, on teaching it in a way that, that, that really helps people to get to the essence of it in as efficient a way as I possibly can. Uh, but yeah, please be assured that um, I think it'll be worth it. It'll be worth the wait. Uh, again, if you've, if you've done some of the other Long White Cloud Qigong courses, the Small Universe or the Inner Fire or the Elemental Alchemy, you'll, you'll know it's like, yeah, we, we managed to encapsulate a lot and get to the essence of a lot in what's a relatively short space of time. And that's what I'm aiming to do with the Qigong healing as well. All right, that's my little update. Um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on another vlog soon.